Welcome back ladies and gents. Um, this video is going to be a little bit tricky, so please try to keep up with me. Obviously, if you do get stuck, then pause the video, go back a few steps if you have to. Um, and it's all going to be around um, filtering and drop-down lists and putting them together. Now, before carrying on further, I just want to highlight something um, about comments. So if you remember a few videos back, I did say that you want to, as you go through this, you want to um, explain what you're doing as you're going through with it. So when you do something like uh, like this, for example, that's a conditional formatting from a few videos back, you should have inserted a comment to say, okay, this is what I've done, here's how I've done it, this is why I've done it. And you should be doing that all the way through this entire <coughs> this entire project so there will be a good uh, good time to remind you especially for those who want the merits and distinctions you must be including comments as you go through each section anyway let's go on to what uh what we're trying to do here now in the last video we showed uh we looked at how we can make a drop down box and as you can see we've we've got it still here now i've added a, a border around just because it's easier to see now the thing i want to show you is this uh, if you keep an eye on this information here um, so, you know, in total we have 499 people who com conducted the survey and that's what, where the data is from and on average um, we've, ha we've got 5.7, uh, say 6 out of 10 um, for the book ex booking experience on average that is. Average cinema experience score was at 8 and uh, pe 8 out of 10 people would uh, on average recommend, um, you know, to a friend. And in terms of expenditure, out of the 499 people, it works out to be about 10.99 per person. But that's the overall data. It doesn't change when you change the filters. So, for example, here, let's just say I want to know how much is it work out per film. So, specifically, how much does it work out for Star Wars? If I go here and then uncheck everything and go straight to Star Wars, which is here, uh, it's perfect that I get all the Star Wars data here. But it doesn't change anything in here. That's the overall. That's the total. So it would be nice to have a breakdown here as well. So I'm going to go back here and show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to take all that back so we get everything back to normal. There we go. And on the right hand side, we're going to have three helper columns. We're going to call the first one help, oh, helper one. Sorry, it'd be easy if I just copy and paste this three times to get the same style. Helper one. And in fact, if you then drag this across, it should copy the title, but continue the number. So one, two, and three, there you go. Um, I'm gonna put a border around this. There you go, done. Now in the first one, what we're going to do is um, what we want this column to do is basically um, assign our own number for each one of these. So this one will be known as 1, that will be known as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way down. So we want it to just give us a wrong number. That's all. Um, and you'll see why in a moment. It, to, well, I'll tell you now actually, it's to help identify each row or each set of data or record, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a formula in here. So um, we're going to put equal. So obviously you're going to have to screenshot this later. So anytime you do any kind of formula, you should screenshot and explain what you've done. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in rows. There we go, rows. And we're going to put brackets. And we're going to select uh, the name of the film. Okay, so it is across here. Okay, so we're going to select that. And yeah, I think we'll do that. And then we're going to put that there, which is the semicolon. And then it should automatically uh, uh, copy this, the same cell reference again. So that's there. The, that name of the film, the first one is D2. And therefore, it's changed that to D2. And I've put semicolon and it's put D2. So that's the array. We're then going to um, put bracket close and then press enter okay and that just gives it one so basically anything in that is going to be one now i'm going to use the drag tool here in the bottom right hand corner of the cell and just drag it all the way down and what I should do is copy it down now it hasn't 
because I have forgotten to do something. I have forgotten to... Yeah, let me just try this. Yeah, I'm going to put um, F4, if I can find it on my laptop. No, that's not it. No. Okay, so I'm going to have to put the symbol in myself. So basically what we're going to do is put a dollar sign in front of it. Let's see if that works. Hopefully it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, I've forgotten something and I can't remember what it is. If you give me two seconds, boys and girls, I'll be... Okay, so uh, I figured it out. Basically, if you look back here again, um, I'll just double click it actually. There we go. So basically, I put pad. Sorry, let me say it again. Padlock. Pound sign here. So dollar sign here. Dollar sign there. But the second one should be left alone. Now, what the dollar sign does is it's basically known as an absolute cell addressing. And what it does is it's like an anchor. It locks it in. Okay, so we need to lock the first one, but not the second one. So if I press enter, if you look at this difference between the second one and the first one, can you see I've got the pad, uh, I've got the um, dollar signs on the second cell reference as well, and I don't want to do that. So if I delete that and delete that, you'll see if I drag it down, sorry, the number two pops up. Yeah. So if I drag this down now, two is two, the third one is three, the fourth one is four, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So if I show you again, equals rows, brackets, then you click the name of the film, which is over here, uh, semicolon, and then brackets closed, and then you put uh, dollar signs in front of the first letter and the first number in the array. You press enter, and then you drag it down so that it copies all the way down to the bottom. So you go all the way down to the bottom, and all this is doing is basically we're giving it a unique number, to so to speak. So each row has a unique number. So we're going to stop there. Okay, so that makes sense. That's 499. As we said, there's 400, 499 people who uh, have a, you know completed the survey. So that's the first helper column done. Okay, so what I would suggest is that I'd screenshot that and explain that right now. Explain that you've use a, a, a row formula here that will help uh, identify each row by giving it a unique number for each one. Then you use a drag tool to copy it all the way down. Inclu include the fact that you put a padlock, sorry padlock, I keep saying padlock, I do apologize, a dollar sign here for the first cell reference um, in front of the D and the, uh, the 2. What that does is it locks it in place but you didn't do that for the second one. By doing so, if you compare it to another one randomly, you'll see this one says D2 but it's got D7 there instead. So it, the second number continues to basically get that number in there. Okay, so that's the first step before you carry on any further. Now in helper two, so like I said, do not, I'd pause the video here and explain what you've done. Get the comments in there um, and put it into your document here. Okay, with that power graph. Okay, if you're back, that means you've done all that. We're looking at helper two column now. Now helper two will only show the rows that I select in the drop down list. So over here you'll see that I've got uh, this drop down list as I mentioned early on. So when I click on um, if I can find it when I click on Annabelle it should only show the ones that are, that are Annabelle over here. So how do we do that? Um, we're going to Go in here, press equals, and we're going to do our first if statement. So we're going to put if and bracket, and then we're going to select the drop down list. So we're going to go over here and click on this, okay, and then go back. Oh no, sorry, let me do that again. There, and then comma, come back. Just want to make sure it's correct. Cineworld main data. Okay, yep, there we go. Summary sheet B7, yep, comma. Then we come back over here. And then what we're going to do is we need to put a pound sign here as well before the B. Sorry, I keep saying pound sign. Dollar symbol before the B and before the 7. Okay, dollar symbol there. 
Then we're going to come back over here to the end. As I said, it is going to get complicated, but all you got to do is watch what I'm doing, pause it if you have to, take your time. What my suggestion is, watch me do it first, understand what I'm doing, then rewind it, play it again, then pause as you go along. Um, so I've got that, and then we're going to put equals. Okay, so if it's equals to, I'm sorry, not here, before the dollar, then we go, sorry, before the, uh, after the comma sign, if it's equals to um, the movie name, which is this one here, because I'm in the first uh, row, uh, row, so I'm going to copy this one here. So if it's equals to that, we're going to put another comma and we're going to click on helper one there we go this one here so underneath there first one and then we're going to put comma and hopefully this works and we're going to put two speech marks basically means blank because there's nothing in between there and then we're going to put uh, a bracket now let me just look at this and make sure it makes sense. So basically, what we're saying is, if um, if the if in the drop down box, which is in the summary sheet, here can you see? If in the summary sheet, B seven, which is the drop down box, is equals to the the um, this one here, yeah, then. We're gonna get it. We're gonna give it a one. This number here, okay? Can you see here? So when this bar here is, if the drop-down box is equals to what is being said here, which is in here D two. Sorry, the film name. There it is D two. Then we're gonna say M two, which is this one here. Yeah, if it matches. Now, if it doesn't match, we're going to leave it blank. So, when you press enter. Okay, um, let's see what's missing. Right, it might be because... Okay, let me try deleting these dollar symbols first and see if that makes a difference. No, it doesn't. Okay. I was hoping it would work here. Um, okay, I'm just trying to figure out how we can go around this. It, I think it's not working because it's trying to do over two different tables. Right, let me see if we can figure this out. Okay, ladies and gents, I have figured it out. Um, I'm not sure what I did wrong the first time around, but there it is in front of you. If Cine, uh, Cineworld main data sheet D2 in uh, dollar symbols is equals to the the selection in uh, the summary sheet, uh, which is the drop down box B7, um, then we will copy over M2, which is this one here. Otherwise, we won't. Okay. Um, and I'll show you how I did it again. I'm going to just delete this. Go back in here, equals, if, brackets. So what we're going to say is if this is equals to this, then we want this. Otherwise, so comma, speech marks, because there's nothing in between, therefore it's blank brackets enter there you go done the only thing i haven't done yet is inside this one here the b i want a dollar sign before the b and a dollar sign before the seven there we go now i'm hoping this works let's drag this down and see if it works basically anytime annabelle comes up it should work can you see so that's annabelle seven is showing yes copying it over annabelle there 13, 12, sorry. So again, I'm going to drag this all the way down. And what it should do is only show the ones that has been selected in that drop down box. So if you do a quick test now, can you see here? Annabelle. Now, in theory, and I'm hoping this works, 
if I go back over here and change that to a different film, let's just say Detroit, and go back here, you'll see that. Oh, it hasn't changed. Although it should have. Oh yes, you know, I it's because it's so close to each other. It has changed. There it is. There you go. Detroit has been changed. Detroit there has been changed. And Detroit there has been changed. And it's copying over. Okay, so that's the next step. Okay, so again, pause it here if you need to, rewind it if you need to, if you must, and do it again. I, I'm also hoping that you can see how spreadsheet can be it can be quite quite temperamental and there is what's known as trial and error. And you know, some even for someone like me who's been who's worked with spreadsheets for 15, 20 years now, and I use it almost all the time at work. Um, it does take some time to get your head around it, and it is solving problems left, right, and center. So, um, so that's the next step. The the next one will be helper three. Now, in helper three, I'm going to show you what to do in a second, but I want to remind you again: pause the video. Make your comments, so right click and say what you've done here and uh, why, uh, insert comment, and then of course screenshot this, and when I say this I mean this here, the formula, you're going to explain that you've created an if statement here, that is going to test whether um, the film name matches the selection that was made by the user in the summary sheet, and if it does, it will copy the row number across. And if it doesn't match it, it won't copy it over. Okay? And this will help with uh, filtering out what we need when we use the combo or the drop down list soon. So that should then be screenshotted and inserted into here. So that's your second screenshot for section 10. Um, I'm hoping this makes sense, boys and girls, because as I'm saying, I'm, you know, I'm explaining it to you verbally, so you should be listening to what I'm saying and put it down in here. So let's look at the next one. So obviously, if you're looking at helper three now, it means you've done helper one and two. You've commented on both, and you've made sure you've got the screenshots with the formulas in your uh, Word document, your Google Drive document. Let's look at helper three now. Now this here will move the job, the main point of helper three, column helper three, is to basically only show the visible items from here, in here, and move it to the top. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into here and we're going to do another formula now. So you should be getting extra marks here because of look how many formulas we're working with. Um, and we're going to type in small, and that's the function we're going to use. And we're going to um, select helper two. Um, ooh, I can't remember. If it's the whole thing or just the one thing, I think. I think it's that. I think it is. Right, let me. Let me double check. I cannot remember. Right, it was the whole thing. So I'm going to do that again. Equals small bracket. And then I want to select the entire column in helper 2. And don't worry about what is showing and what's not. I'm just going to select the entire column. There we go. And go back to the top. Here we go. And what we need to do is we're going to put. Um, semicolon, I believe it was. One second. No, that's already been done. It is the dollar sign. We need dollar sign here, dollar sign there, dollar sign before the letter there, and before the number. So it's a dollar sign in front of each letter and each number. And remember, the dollar sign is a way of um, locking it down, which is known as absolute cell referencing. So those, those are the exact words you need to use when you comment on this in your Word document. Uh, once you got that, we want comma, and then we are going to um, type in rows. We've used rows before already for the first helper uh, column. And we're going to put brackets again and we're going to select helper 2, which is this one. And we're going to put brackets twice. But I also need a dollar symbol here and a dollar symbol there. 
Okay. Press enter. And that is that. So we're now going to drag this down. So what you'll notice is basically the, the what this formula does is it's going to count anything that's visible and put the lowest number at the top first and then the second lowest number and then the third lowest number and the fourth lowest number so if I press enter you'll see it's shown the first one It's eight there because that's obviously the lowest as you go down it gets higher so if I then drag this down using the drag tool um, okay there's something wrong here I believe it might be because I shouldn't have put the dollar sign there let me just see if that makes a difference No, it doesn't. Okay, what have I done? Um, let's see. So, equals small. Okay. Let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. Okay, let me have a look. Okay, so the problem is, ladies and gents, I did forget something. Double click inside. Uh, there it is, so N2, um, semicolon, and N2 again, there we go, but in the first one we want to put a dollar and a dollar and enter, now it's not changed anything here, but if I drag this down, there we go, so it's actually copying over all of the um, numbers that are in here that are visible, so it's completely ignoring the blank ones and showing the visible ones, so let me show you the code again. In fact, it might be easy if I just go here and look show you at the top. So you can see small equal uh, brackets n2, which is this one here, all the way down to n500, which is all the way down. And then I put the uh, the dollar symbols in front of each letter and each number, comma rows brackets again. And then I've selected this, and I put a, a semicolon, and then n2 again. But I put a dollar sign in front of the first letter and the first number of the first left hand side of the of the uh, of this uh, this formula here but I've left the second one blank because then if you look at the next column n2 changes to n3 n4 then n5 then n6 but the rest stays exactly the same can you see the entire formula stays exactly the same the difference is that the last number changes, which makes sense. So I'm going to go to the top, drag this all the way to the bottom because we want it to be applied on every single cell. Uh, because as we change through, you'll see um, that we'll need it. Now, straight away, you're going to notice there's an error, error symbol here. And the reason why there's an error, it's not because there's something wrong. It's because um, after 499, there's nothing else. So there's obviously nothing else to show here. So we obviously need to change this. Not because they need to be changed, but you get extra marks um, by keeping it clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an, a, an error um, formula. So we're going to put go to the beginning here, right after the equal sign, we're going to put if error. Yeah. Then we're going to put brackets. Um, then we're going to put a comma here two speech marks and then a bracket again so what that is basically saying is if there's er an error you do this otherwise you leave it blank press enter hasn't changed anything in the first one but then if I drag this down all to the all the way to the bottom hopefully this works and there we go so the blank ones remain blank and the ones that uh, are, that need to be visible from here are copied over and then moved to the top show you there we go now the beauty now is if I come over to the summary sheet and change this to um, mother and go back over here you'll see that these numbers change and so do these so it's basically filtering out the ones that I need okay can you see that it's filtering out the one that I need um, So that link has been made. So if I go to get out, do another test, you'll see it's moved all the get out information. So if we go down to the bottom, you look at the first one, you'll see that is get out. Okay, so before we do anything else, right click, insert comment, explain what you've done and why. 
And to summarize, I've mentioned this already, but I'll say it again. This column is about copying over the visible data from helper to column over and then pushing it up to the top so it's organized. Okay? So pause the video here. Use a, uh, use a comment in, to insert a comment and, of course, screenshot what you've done. Screenshot the, the, um, this formula. There's a number of things here. You've used an if statement as well to clear out the error. You've used a small function here as well. You've used the dollar signs to make sure you anchor or lock down certain cell references. And this is known as absolute self uh, addressing. Um, and of course, you've used these speech marks to make sure that it stays blank. So this all should be print screen and then put in here. So that's your third print screen and third explanation. Okay, so now that you've done helper one, two, and three, we're going to use this information and create a, another table that's going to look similar to this, but it's going to filter out because of our drop down menu. So um, I know this is a long video, but we are doing quite a lot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this here up to price paid. So control and C or right click and copy. Go across, get some space. I'm going to go to about here and then just paste it in here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first one here. And what we are going to do is put an index. So obviously this is a new uh, task, a new formula, and again, something else that you're going to print screen and explain. So we're going to put an index, if I can spell. There we go, index. And then we're going to put brackets, and we're going to select the entire table up to price paid. So we're going to go from here, all the way across to price paid, and then all the way down to the bottom. So we want to... Uh, basically select everything. Now what I could have done is put main data because that's what we named it as didn't we earlier on in a different video and this is why naming cells can be so useful because um, rather than doing that I could have just typed name data. Anyway, I've done that anyway. I'll go across, oh sorry, too far, and back to the top, to here, there we go. So um, that's been done and then what we need to do is we need to put um, an absolute cell reference here which is uh, the dollar signs in front of each letter and each number there we go and then we need to put comma and we're going to select the first helper 3 cell which is this one here Okay. so for me it says O2 for you might say something else that's why I'm saying underneath the first helper 3 right there once that's done we're going to put um, a dollar sign in front of the first letter, just the O, not the number this time. Okay, so dollar sign in front of the first letter, leave the uh, leave the number. Then we're going to put comma and the word column. Columns, there we go. And bracket again, and then we're going to click the first empty cell here, right next to it, there. And then we're going to put semicolon. Oh, sorry. There we go. And then that again. Brackets close and brackets close. The reason why I have two at the end here because we've got two on this side here. So if we've got two opening, two has to be closed. Now for this one though, there's two Q2s there, as you can see. The first Q2 needs to be uh, locked down as well. So we're going to put a padlock, sorry, a dollar sign for each of those as well. Now what this should do, if I press enter now, is copy over um, the, the email address okay, for the ones that are showing here. So if I drag this down now, it should, there we go, as if by magic, all done. So this is only going to show the ones that have been selected. okay. So I'm going to drag this down. But if I do, you can see the reason why I didn't go all the way down is because I wanted to show you the, the error message again. So again, if you remember the, the last uh, uh, bit of the video, we're going to put an error um, if statement here. So if error, brackets open, and we're going to go to the end here, and we're going to just put comma, speech mark, speech mark, brackets close, enter. Now it doesn't do anything to the first one, but when we drag it down, you'll see these ones at the bottom will disappear. There you go. So all we've got to do now is drag this all the way down to the bottom. Just make sure I am actually up to the right spot. 
my eyes are playing tricks with me. I think. Yep, that's right. My mind is uh, blank. There you go. So that's been copied all the way to the bottom. Now the next thing I want to do is, now this is going to be a bit more trickier because it's such a big table. Um, but I'm going to drag it to the right as well. So I'm going to get it in place and I'm going to drag that little box there all the way to the right. Now you can't see anything's happened until I go to the top. And you see it's copied every detail for the ones that should uh, show up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to space these out a little bit just so it's easier to see. Uh, I can leave that large because the name of the film will be large. Make this smaller, make that smaller, uh, make this larger. And then of course the ratings can be smaller as well. And to make this a little bit more um, presentable, add a border. And there we go. Now, what we should see is this change according to the film. So we've got get out here, as you can see. If I go back over here, change this to Den of Thieves. Go back here, you'll see that shows only Den of Thieves. Go back over here, change it to the babysitter. Go back over here, you'll see it just shows the babysitter. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how this could be used, utilized, uh, and what kind of data information we can gather from this. But before we go any further, I want you to print screen what you've done here, print screen this um, code, this formula, explain that you've done another if error message, an index function, as well as um, other um, absolute cell referencing or ad absolute cell addressing in here as well. Uh, explain why, and the why is basically to help you identify the individual records depending on which film has been selected. Okay? So, make sure that's done, and also make sure that you've done uh, the comments here as well.